So with Joe Biden being the Democratic Party's frontrunner, you would think that currently if he genuinely wanted to win, he would be doing everything in his power to win over Bernie Sanders supporters. Now, one thing that he could do that might help is endorse Medicare for all. I say might because none of us would believe that he actually believed in it. But if he at least endorsed the idea of Medicare for all, it would give Bernie Sanders supporters just a little indication that maybe he's serious about winning us over, but he's not willing to do that. But putting politics aside, let's say he didn't want to embrace Medicare for all for purposes of political expediency. He should at least reconsider his current position out of necessity, given the global pandemic that we are dealing with, because before this pandemic hit, he claimed that he would veto Medicare for all. Okay, that's horrible. You're a bad person because 68,000 lives would be saved, according to a Yale study, every single year if we passed Medicare for All. But if you actually cared about the people, this global pandemic, if nothing else, should get you to rethink your position. Now, the way that COVID-19 is going to have a very direct impact on our lives isn't just through, you know, social distancing and self-quarantining. It's going to be on healthcare costs to where even if you're one of the lucky ones who don't get COVID-19 or know anyone, this still may affect you because health insurance companies are going to raise the costs because that's the only way that they're going to be able to recoup what they've lost fighting this pandemic. And this headline from the New York Times explains it well. Coronavirus may add billions to the nation's health care bill. Insurance premiums could spike as much as 40% next year, a new analysis warns, as employers and insurers confront the projected tens of billions of dollars in additional costs of treating coronavirus patients. So I want you to think about that before we go into the article. Insurance premiums could jump to as high as 40%. So even if you personally don't get COVID-19, people who are on the same health insurance plan that you're on will. And this is going to cost the insurance companies millions of dollars to pay for the treatment and whatnot. So, you know, the costs are going to go up because they're not just going to eat that loss. These are businesses. Remember, their number one goal is to make money, not provide people with health care. So they're going to pass that cost on to the consumer rather than just eating it themselves, not taking an extra bonus. And it really shows why private insurance companies should not exist. We should abolish them and opt for single payer at a minimum, a national health system at a maximum. But let's get to the story because I think it's very telling about the current situation. Reed Abelson reports, with so much still uncertain about how widespread hospitalizations for coronavirus patients will be around the United States, a new analysis says premiums could increase as much as 40% next year if the pandemic results in millions of Americans needing hospital stays. Health plans went into 2020 with no hint of coronavirus virus on the horizon, said Peter V. Lee, the executive director of Covered California, the state insurance marketplace created under the Affordable Care Act, which conducted the analysis. To protect businesses and individuals from sharply higher rates, he supports a temporary federal program that would cover some of these costs. No insurer, no state planned and put money away for something of this significance, Mr. Lee said. Insurers and employers are already prodding Congress to consider health helping them pay for a crisis by setting up a special reinsurance program that would cover the most expensive medical claims. The federal government would fund the program to lower the amount being paid by employers and insurers. While insurers have enjoyed strong profits in recent years, they say the cost of the pandemic could be overwhelming, especially to employers and workers already struggling to pay for coverage. Without help lowering their costs by having government pay for the most expensive hospital stays, Mr. Lee warned that insurers are likely to seek rates that are double their additional costs from the virus. Their costs go up 20%, Mr. Lee says. Rates could jump as much as 40% in 2021. So just pause and really think about this. Think about how disgusting this is. We are told to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. We're told that, you know, if we have an emergency that we can't afford, maybe we should have save that money. Maybe we shouldn't have bought that new iPhone. Maybe we shouldn't be buying coffees. Maybe we should, you know, save that money for a rainy day. Well, why isn't the government telling the CEOs and CFOs and COOs of these companies, hey, 
rather than pocketing the profits that you made, why didn't you guys save for a global pandemic? Why didn't you put away money for a situation like this? Why is the first thing that you're doing is crying to the government for help, begging for corporate socialism? That's unacceptable. And really what's hilarious to me is after spending four years trying to convince us how much we love our employer-based private health insurance plans, well, they're really not doing a good job of making the case for themselves in favor of their existence. They're making the case against themselves because if you can't weather this storm, so to speak, during a global pandemic, then why should we have private insurance companies? Maybe the government should be the sole insurer of Americans. Maybe the government should be the single payer if these private companies are going to beg the government for help anyways. Why should we put more money into a private system when the government can just offer socialized insurance to Americans? And that's at a minimum. I'm getting to the point where Medicare for all just isn't enough. I want a national health system because these private insurance companies, private hospitals, maybe they can't deal with a global pandemic sufficiently. Maybe we need a full-on Great Britain model, right? So they're not helping to make the case for their existence. But seeing what's playing out, seeing the need for healthcare during a global pandemic and seeing how this may impact individual human beings in this country, you think that that would trigger at least some level of introspection and at least maybe make Joe Biden rethink for a second his previous anti-Medicare for all stance. But he's not doing that. Asked about this in an interview, whether or not, you know, he would consider softening his stance towards Medicare for All, he unequivocally said, nope, not going to do it. Take a look. I, I do have one final question for you, because as you've been seeing, our health care system seems to be crumbling underneath this crisis. There is not enough. There's not enough support for the health care system. There's not enough support for the American people inside of the health care system. Are you now reconsidering your position when it comes to single payer health care? Single payer will not solve that at all. The thing that is needed is, for example, we have a whole number of hospitals that are being so stretched, including rural hospitals, they're going to need more financing. That doesn't come from a single payer system. That comes from the federal government stepping up and dealing with the concerns that they have, the reimbursement that they're going to get, how they're going to be able to move forward and how they're going to be able to make provide all the needed help that are needed in their communities. This is an opportunity to look at reconstructing the health care system in a way that, in fact, can respond more rapidly and more and more and more effectively to these kinds of crises, because it's going to come again. We should be spending and we are spending a great deal of time and effort finding a vaccine, finding a way to, that we can deal with preventing these diseases further down the road. But, for example, we had people when our administration, we had CDC people in other countries because we wanted to anticipate when, in fact, another virus would occur, when, in fact, a pandemic might occur as a consequence of a spreading virus in another country country to act quickly. President, we, we withdrew those people. I insisted that we, I, I did insist. I, I suggested that we should have people in China at the outset of this event. And when, when it all started in Luhan province and what happened, we did not insist that they go into so, the areas we wanted to. So, so I, I just, that's all I can do is do what I know has to be done. Say what I know has to be done. Okay, well then fuck you. No Medicare for all, no vote. Fuck you. It's that simple. If you won't even consider it, then I won't even consider voting for you. Now, it's not like Joe Biden would be let off his leash by his health industry donors, because once he entered this race, we all know that the health insurance industry was betting on him to save their asses. So he's doing this for self-interested reasons. He wouldn't dare support Medicare for All because his donors in the health insurance industry wouldn't be too happy about that. And maybe they wouldn't support his campaign as willingly as they are now. Now, I just want to note that in that entire interview, not once was he asked about Tara Reid's allegations of sexual assault. So just keep that in mind. Now, you know, what's interesting about this is the way he answered that question, like first he said no, and then he said that single pair wouldn't help, and then he went on to uh, do word salad and just change the subject, basically. 
he started talking about vaccines and the CDC and whatnot. And the reason why he can't actually give a cogent answer to that question, aside from the fact that he is obviously in cognitive decline, is because there is no serious answer that you can give to that. This global pandemic, COVID-19, has proven why we need Medicare for all. And in every single state so far that has voted in this primary process, even in states where Joe Biden won in a landslide, still a majority of voters opted for Medicare for all. So the fact that he won't even consider it, consider this one concession, it shows you where his priorities lie. He doesn't care about the American people, or at a minimum, he cares less about them than the profits of health insurance companies. Maybe he cares about the American people. Maybe he genuinely doesn't want people to die, but he doesn't care enough to opt for a Medicare for all system. Now, what's funny is that he still wants to pretend as if he's the hero. He tweeted out, let me be clear, no one should have to pay for coronavirus testing or treatment. To which Ashra Taylor responded saying, then why should they have to pay for chemo? Exactly. If you think it's unreasonable to make people pay for treatment for something that's out of their control, that they would choose not to get, why can't we extend that logic to other sicknesses? Why are we suddenly making an exception for COVID-19? Kamala Harris tweeted the same thing. I thought she supported Medicare for all at one point in time. What a big joke that turned out to be. But why is it that you think they should pay for chemo but they shouldn't pay for coronavirus. Now, of course, I don't believe that anyone should have to pay for treatment for COVID-19, but they also shouldn't have to pay for anything. Healthcare should be free at the point of service because if you don't have a dime to your name, that doesn't mean that you should be denied access to healthcare. And I'm not talking access to health insurance. I'm talking direct access to health care itself. So, I mean, the state of American politics is just disgusting. We can literally be hit with a global pandemic and now be the number one country in the world with COVID-19 cases. And the Democratic Party, the supposedly left-wing party, the party of the working class, still won't even consider for a second Medicare for all. And Democrats wonder why there's so little enthusiasm for Joe Biden. And I'm sure that they're going to wonder why he lost to Donald Trump if that does in fact happen in November. But if they want to know and they seriously want to know why they're so hated by everyone, they need to look in the mirror because they've lost their souls. They used to be the party of FDR and now they are the party of, um, I don't know what they stand for, to be honest. They don't stand for working people. So um, this party is a, a disgrace. Joe Biden is a terrible candidate and out of a field of, uh, what, 20-plus candidates, we really shouldn't allow it to be lost on us that Democrats opted for one of the worst. One of the worst. The only person who would have been worse than Joe Biden is Michael Bloomberg. But the fact that they opted for the second worst, I mean, <laughs> what a joke. <laughs>